I'm glad you were able to access the video. Today we're going to talk about uh, the geological time scale or Earth history. Um, so thank you for uh, checking the video out. This is our first video together, so bear with us as we go through this. Um, but today we're going to talk about how old the Earth is. So this is your essential question for your notes. How old is the Earth? First, we want to look at how did scientists figure it out, okay? Over time, scientists have done many experiments to see how old the Earth is, okay? The first scientist to try to estimate the age of the Earth was Archbishop Usher in 1654, okay? Back then, almost everyone who could read and write were part of the clergy, so most scientists and naturalists were clergymen. So in 1654, Archbishop Usher, using um, the text he knew well, the Bible, estimated that the earth was 6,000 years old. He even came down to an exact birth date, um, a Sunday in October, but I can't remember the day or year, but uh, 6,000 years old. Okay. Fast forward a few years later in 1749, uh, Georges Comte de Buffon estimated that the Earth was 75,000 years old, using uh, this time using scientific data. He measured how long it would take for iron from a melted substance to solidify, because at that time they theorized that the Earth was a big ball of molten iron, and they estimated how long it would cool down. Okay. Fast forward again to 1897, Lord Kelvin, using the same sort of technique but with different data, estimated that the Earth was between 20 to 40 million years old. So here we see a huge jump from 75,000 to 20 to 40 million. People started starting to realize that the Earth is a lot older than what they previously thought. Okay. Okay. Our next estimation came in 1900 with John Jolly who estimated that the Earth was between 80 to 100 million years old. He did this by looking at how long it would take the ocean, the ocean as you know it now has salt, right? So he looked at how long it would take all that salt to deposit into the ocean, either from minerals or from living organisms. So he estimated from when the oceans formed to the current salt content, it would take between 80 to 100 million years old. Okay. Fast forward again to the uh, mid-1900s and we have uh, radioactive dating. Okay. So people looked at how atoms decayed or broke down to see how long the Earth existed. We'll go into this in a lot more detail because there's a lot of science behind it. We'll talk about how atoms decay and we'll talk about half-lives. But radioactive dating gave us our most accurate uh, age of the Earth, which is... 4.6 billion years old. Okay, so we want to jump from 100 million using the methods these scientists use to 4.6 billion years ago. This is a great example of scientific investigation. We see experiments repeated over time. We see that they're questioning the same things. They look at other people's research and build from it and correct it if they have to. We started with 6,000 years based on anecdotal evidence, based on uh, written history to 4.6 billion years based on you know hard scientific investigation okay. so 4.6 billion years ago think about that okay can you imagine 4.6 billion years it, it's sort of hard to especially since humans think of time and space differently so I just want to talk about that for a, a moment when we think about time and space okay human perspective we see time in um, a human lifespan. And then we see space in, we use our body, body parts as measurement. So we see space as um, references to body. So we reference the body. For example, the measurement feet. Okay. 
we think about feet, um, if you deal with horses, a lot of the times you measure a horse, how tall it is by how many hands, how many hands high that horse is. Okay, so in human perspective, we see time in a human lifespan. We think 100 years is a long time because we can't even, most people don't even live to 100 years of age. And then space, we reference space and distance as a reference point we use our body. When we look at the geologic perspective, we think about a lot longer chunks of time and a lot larger chunks of space. Okay, a lot of, if you've heard of deep space, they also refer to this as deep time. So time, okay, they look at time in, in, in aspects of billions of years. Okay, and we look at space at huge distances. So space, things like light years. Okay. So, human perspective to geologic perspective is a huge difference. This is a lot more concrete to us. It's a lot easier for us to relate to. This is harder for us to wrap our heads around. It would take us 150 years just to count once per second to 4.6 billion years. So if you wanted to count how old the Earth is by one, you wouldn't even last long enough because you would be dead. It takes 150 years. Okay. So to sort of make Earth history a little bit easier for us to understand, a lot of, a lot of people look at a clock and put Earth history in, in the perspective of how we look at time. So here we have a span of 12 hours, okay? And if we look at midnight as the beginning of Earth's history, 4.6 billion years ago, okay? 4.6 billion years ago, the Earth formed the first rocks that would form would be at about 205. We see our first rocks. Okay, so if this is all of Earth's history, 12 hours, the first two hours are spent making are spent making rocks. Okay, so if we go again, if we look at another huge moment in time. If we look at another huge moment in time, we'd look at single-celled organisms. Okay, so single-celled organisms came about 230. Okay, so those things that we just studied, the protists, remember the euglena, amoeba, these would come around 2.30. This is about 3.8 billion years ago. Okay, looking again, let's see, we want to look at our first fish. Okay, who, our first fish that develop is about 10.45. Okay, so here we have this huge span of time, the first single-celled organisms to first fish. And first fish happened about 480 million years ago. Okay, so we're not at billion anymore, we're at million. Okay, and this is something we all know, dinosaurs, right? So dinosaurs, they came around 1123. So right there we have dinosaurs. Okay. And dinosaurs came at 1123 about 230 million years ago. Okay. And then humans. Okay, if we look at this clock, humans come in right here. The first humans came arrive on this clock at 1159. Okay. So I'll just sort of draw an arrow down here since I ran out of room. 
at 1159, the first humans, first modern humans. Which is about, about three million years ago. Okay. So you see that from the beginning of time, 4.6 billion years, we really didn't start seeing complex life until almost present day. Most of the diversity of life, of, of the development of life, happened in these last two hours. We see the first single-celled organisms, and they slowly develop over time. They change over time into more complex organisms. Okay. So, back again, back to 4.6 billion years ago, we have conditions of early Earth. There's lots of volcanic activity, lots of volcanoes, lots of spewing magma, it's a very hot environment, and there's very little oxygen. Okay, so how does life come to be? That's what we're going to be looking at, okay, over the next few days. How do we get from an environment like this where there's very little oxygen, very hot, it seems like somewhere where something couldn't stay alive, how do we go from that to all this diversity of life, the earth as we know it now?